So last weekend I went to New Orleans and I wanted to create a little video diary, basically, of the whole trip. So this is what I captured um, and what I thought of the whole thing. I've just finished nap number one. Yeah, figure out what we're doing with the rest of the day. I think we're going to the French Quarter, so it'll be cool. miles every single day so it was really nice to come home and have our own space where we could sleep soundly for the night and the city itself was just amazing it wasn't that crazy and just walking through the city everything smelled of gardenias and magnolias I mean it's 
mind-boggling to me. Having traveled around, you know, I've gone to like New York City and Tokyo, Los Angeles, and I live in Dallas, and I've lived in Austin. New Orleans smells good, which is weird for a big city. Now, Bourbon Street. Bourbon Street does not smell good. If you are unfamiliar, Bourbon Street is like this crazy, wild party part of town where um, it's just, the street is lined with bars and bar after bar after bar. And in New Orleans, you can drink on the streets. Like you can get a drink and then just walk down the street, which is what a lot of people do. And that's why Bourbon Street winds up smelling a little bit like puke and pee <laughs> because you know, it's the nature of the beast. But the rest of the city, it smelled like spring. As you walk through the city, you can hear church bells, which was really cool. And it was so atmospheric. It makes all the sense to me why writers and artists are drawn to that city. Um, as a writer and artist myself, there's something in the air. So I left New Orleans feeling super, super inspired. We flew out at 7 a.m. We were trying to find the taxi stand so we could take a taxi to our Airbnb. And before we could get there, some guy stopped us and asked like, oh, what are you looking for? And we were like, oh, we're just trying to get to the taxis. And he was like, oh, I've got a guy that my friend can drive you. My friend that's in this van over here. And we were like, oh, a van? I mean, okay, I guess. And he's like, yeah, it's the same as the taxi. Same as the taxi. Here, hop in this guy's van. So we hopped in a strange man's van. The weather, the whole trip was supposed to be rainy, but we got really lucky, it didn't rain on us once. And in fact, the temperature the entire time was perfect. I, every single meal was so, so good. I didn't meet a rude person the entire time I was there. And we went shopping, of course, and walked around. I think the most we walked in one day was like five and a half miles. <laughs> we, we walked when we could, so um, we took a few taxis around and we took the streetcar occasionally, but we did a lot of walking. We did a true crime tour. Uh, last time I was there, I did a vampire tour where we walked around the city and learned all the vampire legends around the French Quarter. And this time we did a true crime tour where we learned about some of the grisly murders that have happened around the French Quarter, and it was very interesting. It was uh, an experience because one of the girls that was in a separate group from ours, but on the same tour, was very, very drunk, uh, to the point where it was concerning. <laughs> At one point she tried to climb the tree um, that was next to our group when we stopped to hear one of the stories. She tried to climb up it. But it wasn't like a substantial tree. It wasn't like an oak tree or anything. It was, I think it was a magnolia, um, which if you've seen a magnolia that's not 100 years old, I'm sure this tree was probably like 20 years old. They're not big trees. They're kind of small. And so she like wedged her way into it. Our tour guide was like, what the fuck? And then I went to a bookshop and of course picked up some Anne Rice which made me feel very stereotypical tourist going to New Orleans, picking up a book by Anne Rice, who, if you don't know, she is the author of Interview with a Vampire, with The Vampire, um, which is that movie from the 90s that I absolutely love that has Brad Pitt and Tom Cruise, um, and Kirsten Dunst, actually, yeah, back when she was a little, little girl. Great movie, great book. I read that book last time I was in New Orleans, and then this time I picked up The Vampire Lestat, which I'm not very far into yet, but is also excellent. <laughs> I will say this, as a Southern lady, born and raised in Dallas, I eat a lot of grits, and New Orleans appreciates grits. <laughs> and I'm so grateful because Getting good grits is not an easy task. There's not even very many places in Dallas that make grits. So to have almost every single menu I came across while I was there has my favorite food on it. Mm, I cannot wait to go back. And this happens every time I travel, the place I go to, I'm always like, I should live there. I want to live there. And that's no different for New Orleans. I'm, I'm on the plane, like looking up job listings. Of course, there's there's not terribly much. New Orleans is not a big, big city. Um, it's definitely much smaller than Dallas. So, um, 
my dreams of moving there will probably remain dreams, but that's all right. It's a great place to visit and I cannot wait to go back. Yeah. So, um, that's it. This is my travel diary for New Orleans. I hope you enjoyed it. And, um, I'll have uh, another one soon. Hopefully. Maybe. Alright, bye. <laughs>